And I love your comments here, guys. So I'm going to take a moment to read them as I go along because I love just incorporating this. C is saying, dragons are kind of a tough one. I feel like each type is almost different class itself. It's hard for me to speak over all dragons, but I would like to ponder that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. There's so many different ones and they're, they're not all doing the same thing. They have different intentions, maybe belief systems, themes, purposes. So now we're going to get into a little story time. And I love theater. I love to be theatrical. I love plays and I um, love storytelling. So I'm going to tell this to you guys in first person as, as, a, as a story of the regression of what happened. I began my regression with Bridget. And as I closed my eyes after like, two hours oh i think i don't know an hour to two hours of meditation because bridges sessions are like four sometimes five hours long all of a sudden she she says to me where are you and i look down at myself and i can see my clothes my hair the color of my skin and i noticed and i felt that i was an, a native american an indigenous person from north america and it felt to me like I was from the 1700s or the 1800s. And as I was looking around, I realized I was in this translucent bubble, this see-through bubble floating in space. And below me, right in front of me, I could see Earth. I was looking right at Earth, just floating in this bubble above space. And then I look behind me, and all of a sudden, I see infinite bubbles with people inside of them behind me there i am in the front and behind me is all these infinite bubbles and i realized that all these bubbles and all the beings in these bubbles were me all my different incarnations from different lives on earth parallel lives on earth and they were all me in the next breath i see and this picture doesn't do it justice because it was a fetus turning into a baby in space in a bubble. I could see that that was myself, the birthing process occurring, a fetus turning into a baby. And then I decide to go down to Earth. I start flying towards Earth. And as I'm flying towards Earth, I can't go through. I can't get in to Earth. I'm not able to penetrate the atmosphere and go down. And I realized in that moment that the only way to Earth is from inside of Earth, that I can't go in down from Earth because nothing comes from space to Earth. Everything comes out of the quantum field. And Earth itself is a quantum at a quantum particle. And the only way to come through it, go through it, is to come be birthed from Earth. So I couldn't make my way down. But then it shifts. Next thing I see is my little hands. I'm a baby. And I see the sun in the sky, something out of a movie, really. I see the sun in the sky, and I'm holding in my hand this paper red dragon, a toy red dragon. And I can't see my face or anything. I see my hands, and I see myself playing with this paper red dragon. I was like two, three years old, and I realized I was a little white baby. And that this dragon was my, my toy, my pet. And as I'm playing with this dragon, I saw a spirit of a dragon rotating around me, a physical or an apparition of a spirit rotating around me, going in and out of me, going through my body, spinning around, spinning around. And I did not expect to see dragons. I did not expect to see this. This is my first regression. Uh, I had one with Geraldine the year before, but before that, it was 2008, many years. And Bridget said to me, are you connected with the dragons? And I said, yeah, the spirit of the dragons are with me. She asked me, do you want to dive deeper? I said, yes, I see reptilians. She goes, do you mean steroids? Because, you know, we call them reptilians. She calls them steroids um, because that is a term that they go by that isn't con uh, doesn't have a negative connotation. And then I see these three beings. 
and I realized that they're my own lives as a reptilian. And it was interesting because I saw it very, this thing is almost exactly how I saw it. Probably actually, as far as I know, is pretty much exact. And each of these beings looked like they were in portrait. I like saw three different portraits. And I realized that they're all different incarnations that I've had as a reptilian. The one I saw here, the duck one, was actually kind of a funny person, had a really good sense of humor, but it was a duck reptilian hybrid. And then the fish one here, the fish reptilian hybrid, was actually a scholar in his planet. And then the one in the middle there, that one, it was standing, I saw him standing on this huge mountain with this castle in the back. And this reptilian was royalty on that planet. And all of them were actually, didn't give me any negative vibes. They all came across as benevolent beings. I did not think I was gonna see anything, anything reptilian-like. That's funny, it looks like Napoleon. So I asked myself, why am I seeing this? And then the answer, dragons are the ancestors of these beings and all reptilians in our galaxy. That these beings, all reptilians, all serpentine, and we're going to get into the ancestry to ourselves as well, but all these beings have ancestry to the dragons, the good, bad, and the ugly. And they were showing them to me to, because I was feeling this beautiful connection to the dragons, showed me my own incarnations as a reptilian and my ancestry to the to the dragons. So I see myself again with as this baby and the fetus as well. And the dragon, this red dragon spirit is just like rotating around me, going around everywhere. And I would start getting downloads on what I'm experiencing. And, and I realized that these dragon beings they're content, they're wise, they're passionate beings that teach children wisdom and harness abilities and provide protection. Dragons are in essence the buffer zone for children to enter a traumatic experience on earth, which includes amnesia. They provide health, playfulness, energetic support to children. And so what I found out later was that they're definitely, this is my first introduction to dragons on this level. Now I'm realizing there are many different dragons, different dragon tribes, they all have different themes. And I was wondering, like, so I was getting that the, you know, these beings in particular were content, wise, passionate. And what I realized was that basically the way it works, guys, is at first I thought it happens for everybody, okay? That we all have these experiences, that we all have dragons that come in with us. And I got to tell you two different stories of what happened after this experience. So one is three months later, I'm in Germany at a restaurant, sitting down with Joan and uh, for breakfast. And then some people were next to us. We got into a conversation. Their doctors teach, uh, their doctors helping out like people that have sicknesses in Africa, not spiritual, nothing. And they asked us what I what we do. I I try to be as vanilla vanilla as possible and water it down, but it's very hard. And I told them, like, angels, Joan of Angels is Joan of Angels. She taps into these realms. And they, they, the lady says to me, wow, it's very interesting. And I didn't speak any, anything about dragons or any of the story. And she goes, wow, how interesting. My daughter had an imaginary red dragon friend for the first three years of her life. Okay. And then what I got in this, while I was having this regression, is that this dragon comes in with your soul, the dragon's, are the stewarding process, the womb, what is the womb? If you guys believe in the soul, if you believe in the soul and souls come from somewhere else, like a woman, say a woman has five kids. Do you think she has five souls in her waiting to come and hatch? Or do these souls come from someplace when it's ready to come in? That's probably more likely what happens. So therefore the womb is a wormhole So womb is a wormhole for souls to come in. And what I got was the dragons were the stewarding process, the ones that brought the souls in. 
they basically come in and they assist in the birthing process. And for what I'm realizing now, it happens for maybe every, but, um, every star seed, maybe it's not every human, but they stay with you for the first three years of your life. Yeah. They act in different ways. They, they um, act as your imaginary friend. They can take on different types of forms, but they pretty much stay, stay with you for those first three years. They help you into this life. And when you come into this traumatic earth experience, they are basically your friend and your counterpart that keeps you company in a world where you're literally unable to do things, but you have full remembrance of your past lives and who you were. Like you can't even move. Think of, besides the trauma of being smacked on the butt, right? Besides that trauma and coming to earth, imagine knowing everything for three years, knowing who you are, but not even being able to crawl around or speak, right? And then imagine starting to forget while in this when you're from a state of remembrance as a baby. So the dragons are basically there to assist you in that process. They provide health. They provide playfulness, energetic support to children. But the question I still have is this for all children. So the other story is three to four weeks later, somebody calls me, right, after this. And I'm no, actually maybe a couple months. And I was going to do the Dragons Conference. Tomorrow is the second annual one. And we were about to do this Dragons Conference. And she goes, okay, check. she goes to me, oh, my God, you guys are doing Dragons Conference. That's so great. I just wanted to talk to you. I found your number on the uh, website and called you up. And she goes, do you know about the Dragons, blah, blah, blah. And I'm all, yeah, yeah, I feel a deep connection. And she goes, she then tells me the same story of what I'm sharing you right now. Yeah, the Dragons help. Be, being children come into this world but they all, she only helps specific star seeds with specific et races and the dragons help you get born into the world and they stick with you for the first three years i just had a regression like a few months earlier with all this information in there and then had that conversation with her and that was just a huge validation for me so then the next moment i was taken I wanted to know where are they from? Where are you from? Why am I seeing this? That was a, a repeated thing. Why am I seeing this? So I was taken to a visual of Earth in the North Pole. I was in the North Pole and I saw this. I saw a red and white spinning vortex with the entrance into hollow Earth. And this is what it looked like. And the dragon says to me, this is where we come from into Earth, meaning us. This is how souls come to the Earth. Bridget says, dragons, will you take us to the portal and show us how this works? And then a red dragon rotates around me and then comes to my third eye, like this image, goes right into my third eye. And then another one came up to my face and went right into my heart. And then this is what I see. I'm in this cavern inside Earth, and there's this translucent blue pool. And it's the most beautiful, mystical, ancient looking thing ever. And around this pool were all these apparitions, so, like spirit dragons that had no legs, but they were dragon faces with like serpent bodies all waiting around the pool. And what I got was, that this place was the life force of earth. The origination, this pool that I was seeing was the origination of souls. Souls, guys, they don't come from outside of earth. Souls don't come from heaven above. Heaven above is an illusion. The reality is everything is within. Everything is through the wormhole. The way to source, to God, to creation is going through the wormhole and earth is one subatomic particle in something that's even bigger the micro and the macro the same thing continues earth is its own subatomic particle all the souls that come from earth are literally birthed from inside of earth and then the dragons come in they have these specific dragons they have a soul contract with humanity to assist in these birthing process. These dragons that are working there used to be physical beings that existed on the planet. 
and now they're working in the etheric realms, assisting with the incarnation process on Earth. So dragon spirits are ready to go with you as your soul exits this incarnational system. I saw dragons of different colors with the dragon face, but the bodies of serpents floating in space. Ooh, okay, okay. So because I uploaded this presentation, I cannot play the audio from here. So I'm going to stop this for a second. I'm going to share my screen instead so I can we can hear the audio. And let's take a moment and read some comments as well, shall we? All right, here we go. Boom. Okay. So what kind of feedback are we having here? And Angelina says, I became a pink dragon on her mushroom trip. As says, we are transmitters. All right, let's keep going. There we go. So I said, I asked, why are we being shown this? And this is what I got. And it is more connected to the surface than anybody wants to admit. Yeah. Friends, as I already know, is not to themselves. Are not evil or inherently evil. There are all types of experiences. Benevolent ones are as important as the other. Benevolent ones do not need to be acknowledged. They don't need to receive praise. They don't need to have an ego boosted. They understand the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. They're full service. And being full service is aligned with free will for those to be them, even if they are the ones connected to it with the various this planet is more connected oh it keeps going the dragons are respected dragons of revere the offspring of the dragons are all those reptilian serpentine beings and all those that have the DNA that connects to what they originally created. This planet is connected to the dragons and the serpent energy than anybody wants to admit. The benevolent ones, just, and the reptilians, right? But the benevolent ones, they don't need their ego boosted. They don't need to interfere with free will. They understand the bigger picture. Part of the bigger picture is allowing us to have our experience. The ones that don't allow us to have our experience, they try to inflict their own free will, um, their own will upon us. But that doesn't mean that they're the only ones that exist. There's other ones that support in the energetic realms. There's other ones that realize that the darkness and the negative ones that we experience is the shadow work that we chose to have so that we could grow from it and learn from it and get the challenges we had from it. Similar to what, what Bibu was talking about, how this system was created for us to go through these dips and through these... Uh, and have these growing experiences, part of that is also the negativity. So the other ones exist, and there are more benevolent ones. There's more harmonious serpents out there than, than nefarious. But the benevolent ones, they're not trying to save us. They're not here to save us. They know why we, what we chose to come here to so we can figure out how to save ourselves. The dragons will love for a day to come where we do not just look into the sky for those beings that look like us to find commonality, but also realize we're connected through genetics and ancestry to beings that look nothing like us. Yes, first contact are going to be with beings that look very similar to us, but that's going to be very short and brief because there's a whole universe of beings out there that just can't wait to shake our hands, that just can't wait to reunite with us. Many of them don't look anything like us. Earth is a racist planet. 
not race based on just the earth experience of race, it's the race based on other races. They would like for me to figure ways to move past this. Earth is a racist planet, but it's not race based on the races on Earth, but are based on speciesism. We, all these species that we've had drama and karma and trauma with around the universe have donated, or a galaxy have donated to this Earth experience. We're race, we're species against ant people. We have speciesism and trauma against reptilian um, beings, reptiles that are the ancestors of these beings on Earth. And it's, it's, they've donated DNA here so we can all figure out how to live in harmony. So part of the earth experience, again, this is super oversimplifying it. It's a whole presentation just to speak on this. Part of the earth experience is us to get over galactic racism. And galactic racism shows up on earth with us not seeing ourselves in the other and many people not seeing yourself in someone that doesn't look like you. It's a part of the earthly experience. And this is actually a galactic thing that is playing out on earth right now. And they wanted me to figure out a way to incorporate into Portal to Ascension ways to transcend that, which is why we did a three-part series on YouTube on reptilians. Like we went deep, 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 three hours each, three days in a row, just on like reptilian energy to just really have that conversation about, you know, our judgments and the blanket statements. It's not even about the ETs as well. It's about us, ETs, everything. The blanket statements we make on a group of people, not realizing that we exist in polarity. And when it comes to the galactic community, there's so much going on out there on Earth. You might know who the good guys and the bad guys are, right, in this game of life. But in the universe, the good guys are just keeping to themselves or just watching us for the most part, right? So the name of my dragon came to me, the one that brought me into this world from the center of our planet. When I came out, as a baby, I saw myself being born by the earth and this red dragon came up to me, wrapped me around me and took me into the womb. I saw the whole process take place. And the name of the dragon was Kumpala, Kumpala. And we asked Kumpala to blend with me. And I saw two or three dragons spin around. And then Kumpala asked me, if I would like to channel a message in dragon language form him. And this is the first time ever, you guys might've heard my spoken word, might've heard me do some dragon light language. This is the first time ever that I did the language and we got it recorded here. And actually it's not light language, it's just dragon language. This is dragon tongue. So it's not like, like a frequency from another planet that is made into light. From what I got, this is just dragon language. So here it is. Believe it or not, but before this, um, light language experience, even though I've done events for many years before this and I've had light language on my platform, I was not into light language at all. And because I, I figured like anybody can just make stuff up. Anybody can just say stuff. And so, and just, and then I'm not saying that they are making it up, but I'm saying that like, because I didn't know how true it really was, I just chose not to incorporate it that much on Portal to Ascension. But there were some people that I've experienced light language from that just from the moment that they started speaking, I just get chills in my whole body. And that's, that's when I started realizing that there is some truth to it. And then when I'm doing this regression, Kumpala, um, Kumpala my red dragon counterpart, asked me, asked Bridget, well, told me that to ask Bridget, I want to speak. Can I speak? And then she goes, yes. And then that's what happened. 
And next thing I saw was floating in space in unison, like birds flying together, me and my friend dragon. And I was also a dragon. And my, the dragon that I was floating with, Kumpala, was my cousin. And the whole process of me coming to Earth from this dragon realm was unveiled. And this has to be said with a caveat, because lives are simultaneous. I had a life on Orion. I was doing things there. All types of things were happening. But this was this parallel reality version of my dragon self occurring at the same time. And when I decided to come to Earth and be born onto Earth, I asked Kampala to be my steward for when I get born. And then Kampala would stay at the translucent pool. And then I saw myself come out as a soul and Kampala take me into the womb. And the next thing I received was that what happens is you, we basically have the dra dragon come with us, right? Again, uh, maybe in my next regression, I'll know who it's for, how many people, or if it's everybody on Earth, or just specific star seeds and what kind of star seeds. But the dragon, after the year three, it goes into your heart and coils up like a serpent in your heart. And then you get incarnated over and over and over. And just like how the, in, in ancient India they say, we, we got to get to a, a level of enlightenment so we can break free from the karmic um, conditioning and the karmic cycle. Part of our earthly mission is for humanity to awaken the dragon heart. So this presentation is basically also called the dragon, Awaken the Dragon Heart Within. And that's what we're going to do to end this out. We're going to do a little thing to awaken our dragon heart. And it goes to sleep in our heart. And Bridget asked me, well, let me read this first. After three years of actively interacting with us, the dragon spirit coils up in the heart, waiting for us to activate the dragon heart. But many of us go lifetimes without activating it. And why do they not continue to interact with us throughout our lives? So Bridget said to me, um, can we do something to make sure you don't have to go to sleep? Because she, you know, part of this hypnosis is also rewiring my consciousness. And she was like, well, let's, let's ask the dragon not to go to sleep and to rewrite that and wake up. And the dragon said, no, this is meant to be. We go to sleep in the heart because we're only here for the first three years. When you start to forget, we go in your heart and it's your journey now to go through life and to learn your lessons. If we were with you, and we were always teaching you and there with you as your counterpart, you wouldn't have the same experience on earth. So even the coiling up of the dragon was all about it. But now we're at a place, now we're at a place where we're evolving. And part of the evolution is us awakening this quite, a, it's funny to say, I guess, quite literal etheric dragon that exists within inside of us. And as we're closing up here, a lot of other things came to me during this presentation, um, during this regression. I had a regression with Geraldine Orozco, who you experienced today, and uh, that was three years ago. Then, uh, two years ago, I had a regression, this one with Bridget Renee Holiday, and then one year ago, I was doing plant medicine in Costa Rica. And through all those experiences together, all these different dots were being connected, pieces of information were coming. On Geraldine's regression, I was on Orion, I didn't know I was on Orion, I was on a planet. And I saw all the systems, the institutions, the business, what I was doing there, why I was there, all this stuff. In the regression with Bridget, I saw myself floating above the planet, and it was the central star of Orion. And I went down to the planet. I, now I know where the planet's located. And I, and I visited that planet thousands of years before the regression with Geraldine, in which the technology from Orion was stolen and they hijacked the Stargate and went through the Stargate and took <clears throat> the crater god technology down to Earth and started basically creating one of the control mechanisms that exists on our planet right now. And then in the plant medicine ceremony, I was at a different time on the same planet. So in all three of those regressions, I was on the same planet at different times as a different person. It was like three different incarnations within thousands of years on the same planet in Orion. And on Tuesday or Thursday, Wednesday next week, I'm doing like another four hour regression with Bridget 
where we're going to specifically go with the theme of Orion and go visit the Orion worlds. And so the next chapter of this is the continuation of the story. And we've heard about the dragons, we heard about all this connection there, but then the deeper story goes into the ancestry of Orion and how Orion connects to us. So that's going to be called uh, the Orion Portal, Reptilians, Galactic Wars, and Stargates. And that's on November 2nd. It basically will be about how we brought peace, how we brought peace to a system in chaos, and how we rebuilt the Crater God technology. So the dragons took me to Orion to show me what happened there. They have deep sorrow for what occurred and want and wish for us to be at peace. We are in essence, we're in essence the, the, the war against dark and light guys. We are at war with our own siblings. We're literally at war with our own soul brothers and sisters. Cause that's how it's all working. We all play roles. Just like the story of Mahabharata, Arjuna was, had to fight a war with Krishna on his side, and he was fighting his own family, his own brothers on the other side. And Krishna said to him, when, Mahabharata, when Arjuna was like, what am I doing? This is my family. I shouldn't be doing this. Krishna, the, in the religion of peace, Hinduism, did not say, stop the war. He said, this is your dharma. This is your role. Play your role fully. Go through it. Do what you're here to do. Right? You would think that God would say, be at peace. You know, it's a deeper story than just to be like, go fight someone. But the dragons were trying to teach me that the that the negative ET invasion, if you will, of this planet are actually our soul, brothers and sisters, and our ancestry to the reptilians is quite substantial. Our DNA is connected to them quite deeply, and many of our souls in our bodies have lived lives as them. I have lived lives as them. So I feel it's part of what I really want to bring is not only the dragon information, but do a lot of things on Orion and just bring in the frequency of what happened there because Orion isn't as chaotic. It was, well, it's a, it's a system of peace now, harmony. But when you speak about it, when we speak about it in, the, in our community, people are speaking about Orion in a way where, oh, the trauma that happened there, the wars that happened there, the DNA wars that happened there. A lot of that stuff happened, and a lot of it we brought to Earth, a lot of that baggage. But that has been a long, long time ago. And we are still playing out roles and traumas from things that have been healed in those systems. So how do we now tap into the codes of healing and harmony that has already been created in the universe and bring that down to earth? And then this was my final message. They told me many times that earth is playing out scenarios that have happened all over the universe. We have scenarios playing out right now within the human expression that are identical to that, right? Um, all around the world. Um, Bridget was saying that they have told her many times that Earth is playing out these scenarios. And that's basically what I was just saying in the last slide. Love the ones you hate. So this is this was the final thing, okay? Why hold on let me why am I seeing this? Uh, stop, stop, stop. There you go. Why am I seeing this? What do I do from this? What do we learn from this? Wait. Don't wait around for them to change. Love the ones you hate and don't wait for them to change. Don't wait around to be in their countries where they're imposing things that you don't want to be a part of. Don't wait around for them to wake up. Wait the world that you want. Don't wait for others to wake up. Don't wait for the policies to change around you. Create the world that you want. Go where you need to go. Go where you want. Move forward with knowing, without fear, without the investment in someone having to change for you to be you. Move forward without fear, without the investment where someone needs to change for you to be able to be you. There will be a time to change. Love the ones you hate, because the ones you hate are bringing you to the way that you need to see the experiences you need to receive in order for you to be 
fully liberated beings. And you may not even say the word hate. You might say that you disagree with, that you find challenging, that you think that shouldn't be doing politics. It's like, how do you get to a point where you can love the ones you disagree with because you're aware that if it wasn't for what they were doing, they wouldn't have given you the challenges for you to grow. That's one thing on earth. They wouldn't have given you the challenges that you signed up for to come to earth. That's even the higher perspective. Loving the ones you hate is the hardest thing for most humans. But loving the one you hate doesn't mean having to be a good presence, having to be gas or him, having to receive traumas and good value. Having to listen to all the things that are killed by me. Having to lose your sovereignty because they say that they own your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It means you love them because you know you are them. You love them because you've been them. Mm. And you love them because they came here for you. You all the things that are killed by me. Having to lose your sovereignty because they say that they own your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. By loving those that you disagree with doesn't mean you give up your power, doesn't mean you give up your sovereignty. You love them because you, know you, them. you love them because you know you are them. You love them because you've been them. You love them because you've been them. You've been what they are in many different lives. It means you love them because you know you are them. You love them because you've been them. And you love them because they came here for you. And that is the bigger picture. Love them because they came here for you. And that is the bigger picture. We all came here for each other. We all came here to be a catalyst. We all came here to give each other joy, struggles, challenges, growth. And those that give you the biggest challenges came here for you more than anything else. Because this planet is a planet of growth. This planet is a planet we come to in order to go through certain things when we have amnesia. Because the best way to realize the light in a world of amnesia is to go through the dark. And the dark just happens to come in many forms on Earth, many shapes and sizes even extraterrestrial agendas and intentions, even political ideology. But in a world of amnesia, the only way to remember is to go through that. So why do we get our brains wiped in the first place? We knew we were coming here. We knew it was almost like, what's the best way and what is the next way that we can grow when we have experienced all that is? Why don't we go to earth? wipe our brains clean of it all it, and create an obstacle course for us to go through to see if even with our brains wiped we still remember who we are and that's what we're doing here on earth at this moment all right thank you everybody All right, there we go. Did you guys see the, I, I just stopped the presentation. Hopefully you guys were seeing it at the end there. Thank you everybody. So wanted to just call in the dragons to close it out there. And just to check, you guys saw the presentation, right? Cause I undid the presentation. I didn't even click stop screen share. You guys saw the ending, correct? the whole thing <clears throat> give me a an amen thank you guys all right so that's it everybody so I wanted to close out with the dragons and I appreciate every single one of you and what I feel would be a good way to end this is to infuse the timeline and activate the dragon heart within and as I was sharing that we all have a dragon with inside our hearts and let's do a couple of chants together 
and vibrate our chest and our hearts and put that energy into, into the ground. Um, first, before we do that, a couple of announcements here. So again, if you guys are interested, tomorrow, October 19th, the Cosmic Dragons Conference brought to you a flow of star codes and Portal to Ascension, <clears throat> second annual event. Go deeper into the dragons. If you feel that energy, feel called to be a part of it. Events, upcoming events, Portal to Ascension org okay my orion's presentation that is a continuation of this the orion portal reptilians galactic wars and stargate to earth that is on november 2nd <clears throat> it'll be a continuation of all this information here and then getting into you know the story behind it all and if you guys want to contribute and donate so i can do more of these epic donation or free events please do go ahead and donate. I'll put the link there. And everybody who's donated, guys, I mentioned it in the beginning, is entered to a drawing to win three months of free events at Portal to Ascension. So if you donate within the next couple of days, I'll go ahead and get all the people together, put them through a random generator and get the winner out there. But if you donate by tomorrow uh, for this event, you all get put into a drawing to win three months of free events. And I'll show you kind of some what's coming up. Well, you'll be getting obviously the Orion portal presentation. We have a channeling from Sirius with Matthew John. We have our free 1111 event, two day workshop on sound frequency, the Christing initiations of Yeshua, Yeshua's life in India, pagan origins of Christmas and New Year's Eve, Geraldine Orozco, holographic universe, fractals and galactic origins, Margaret Rigoloso, Priestess Mystery School's Miraculous Conception, The Womb Portal. Mary Rodwell, The Star Children of Planet Incarnations, The Orion Star System Conference. Meet the Arcturians with Vivian Chauvet. So we have a lot of amazing things. So if you're new to Portal Ascension, go check us out. Sign up. You'll get our newsletters. And when the Year of the Snake begins, since we're talking about dragons, we're doing a free event for the Year of Snake as well. And um, see all the beautiful things we have in store. We've got a lot of amazing things. So let's go ahead now, and I'm just going to put the donation link here. If you guys want to donate and contribute to Portal to Ascension, and you know, when you give the donations, it just allows me to do more free events like this, so I can really spend a few days and and we can just offer this to to the world. Okay, so now to close out, we're going to close out how we started. We're going to start with a little bit of silence, and. Feel just the energy in our bodies. And this is kind of like an integration moment here where we get to integrate everything that we've experienced. And then when we do the chants, we're going to do three inhales and exhales through the heart, right? Activating the dragon heart. We're going to do three ohms, okay? We're going to do three ahs, activating the heart. And then we're going to close it off with humming. Give me a yes if you hear the humming that I'm doing right now. Mm. Let me know if you hear that. Okay, cool, cool. So when we hum, you get to move the energy around your body and we're gonna move it into our heart. And this is all about activating the heart because the best way to infuse the timeline with consciousness is through the heart. So as we do three breaths, I want you to imagine when you exhale out of the heart that the whole of our galaxy is within that heart field. You breathe in, you breathe out, expands around the galaxy, okay? And I'm gonna put up a video of the galaxy as we do this. And then we're gonna do three ohms, Om, Om, Om. We're going to do three ahs, ah, ah, ah. And then we're going to end it with one hum. Okay, so I invite you guys to just get comfortable now. We're just going to spend uh, two minutes here. And please do stick around and just be a part of this in the end. Because so much amazing information, so many speakers, so much great content and just amazing individuals being a part of this, every single one of you, and then all the people that contributed their awareness here. And we've done something good. 
we've literally like put out so much awareness and content that it's tipping the scales to a critical mass. And at this moment, how beautiful would it be if we take all of what we've received and we infuse it into the grids of the earth through our heart and we allow that to permeate out so that everybody else who isn't a part of this event can benefit from it as well. So here's an image, here's a video of the Pleiades star system. So I invite you now just to get comfortable and to start breathing normally in this moment. And I'll guide us through all the different, different things that we're gonna do right now that I mentioned. Just breathe. And just feel yourself. Feel the air on your face. Feel the air going in and out of your lungs. Feel your heart pulsating. And this closing meditation and activation is for us to transmute and transfer the awareness. We keep it within us for sure but to duplicate it and to put it into the grid of earth to go out to all of those in the world and beyond. We're gonna begin with three breaths in and out. And on the exhale, we're gonna expand our hearts around the galaxy. So on your next exhale, start with your first inhale in. Deep inhale. Expand your heart field around the whole galaxy. Deep inhale in. Expand your heart around the whole galaxy. Deep inhale, breathing in all of creation, all of the galaxy's energy. And complete expansion out through the whole of the galaxy. Now on the next inhale, we will start with one of three ohms. Inhale. Now we're gonna do three ahs. Inhale and exhale, ahs. Inhale, opening the heart, activating the dragon heart. Exhale, ah. Uh, vibrations inside of your chest. Tune into your heart. Feel the dragon inside of it. Feel the energy of the heart. The blood inside of your body. 
the pumping of your life force, the electricity running through you. As we expand our heart and you connect to the earth, on the next inhale, in just one moment, keep breathing normally. But when we inhale next, you're going to hum from the back of your throat and move that energy into your heart, into your chest cavity. Feel your chest and your heart vibrate as we hum and activate the dragon heart. Inhale and hum. Inhale again and hum. One more time, one inhale. And hum. As we just experience these 11 days together, and we put a lot of awareness, downloads, remembrance, consciousness, information, intelligence, intellect, awakening into the field. We now gather all this awareness and infuse it into the heart of earth, into the ley lines and the meridians of earth, so that this frequency of awareness may go out to all of humanity so that humanity can awaken to the true potential so that we can remember who we are and that we can create a world based on unity, transparency, awaken consciousness, love, understanding, compassion, forgiveness, truth. Send this frequency out to all of the world. And we send this frequency out to more, to everyone, and especially those who are currently living, living in suffering. Those that are living in pain, disconnection, hurt, confusion, as we also experience those ourselves at times, and everybody experiences at different levels. We send this frequency out to the whole world, knowing that there will be a day that we will exist in harmony and we can come together in unity to usher in the inevitable awakening of humanity. It is time for humanity to awaken. The old chapter is about to close. And we don't need to run away from the old chapter. We can learn the lessons from it and begin to write a new one. May all beings feel peace. May all beings feel love. May all beings feel real happiness.
Love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of this experience. And that's it for now. See you guys next time. Hope to see some of you guys at the Dragons Conference. We're going to keep going. Love and appreciate you all. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.